And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, June 19th. I am the host for today's program, Paul Domain. And many of our stories read here can also be found in our publication, News from Indian Country, or online at IndianCountryNews.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day. The president of the Oglala Sioux Tribe has been arrested during a protest against alcohol sales in Nebraska on the border of the South Dakota's Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Tribal President Brian Brewer was taken into custody June 17th in White Clay as activists protested the town's alcohol sales on the border of the officially dry reservation. Deputy Sheridan County Attorney Jamie and Simmons said Brewer was arrested on a 2012 warrant for passing a bad check for $191 to an animal clinic. Simon said Brewer was taken to Rushville where he paid the minimum amount that he owed and was released. She says the charges will be dismissed. Wisconsin wildlife officials are asking their board to let hunters and trappers kill more wolves this year. The Department of Natural Resources on June 18th finalized their proposed kill quotas for the state's second wolf season, setting the mark at 275 wolves. The state's Chippewa tribes are entitled to half of the quota for the ceded territory, which means non-tribal hunters and trappers will be able to kill approximately 160 wolves statewide. The DNR would issue 2,750 permits up from 2010 last year. The Natural Resources Board is expected to vote on the quotas at a June 26 meeting in Wausau, Wisconsin. Hunters and trappers killed 117 wolves during the last fall's hunt. The Chippewa tribes did not exercise any of their permits, in part leading to a higher permitting process for sportsmen this year around. The DNR estimates as many as 834 wolves roamed the state of Wisconsin last winter. Lakota language uh, preservationists and tribal members say the Lakota language has lost one of its greatest supporters with the passing of Albert Whitehat last week. Whitehat, a member of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe, was instrumental in teaching the Lakota language to new generations for nearly four decades. He passed away June 11th at the age of 74. Whitehat, a grandson of Chief Hollow Horn Bear, was chair of the Lakota Studies Department at Sinte Galeska University on the Rosebud Indian Reservation. Wilhelm Maya is the executive director of the Lakota Language Consortium, a nonprofit organization seeking to revitalize the Lakota language. He says Whitehat was a warrior for the Lakota language, and he says the passing of Whitehat is a blow to the language in efforts to revitalize it. And today we take, a, take you on a short video tour of several sites that can be seen from the Pinocchi Gap Rest Area on Highway GG, a couple miles just west of Mellon, Wisconsin, where mining companies are now drilling in preparation of one of the world's largest open pit mines that all Wisconsin tribes are opposed to. Despite recent attempts to outlaw public viewing of the drilling and mine sites, several organizations like the Pinocchi Hills Education Project will continue to hold Saturday day walks and viewing tours of the proposed mining site and drill site near the Elsio Harvest and Education Camp. That camp is located in the woods of the Pinocchi Mountains Heritage Park, seven miles east of Mellon on Highway 77 at Moore Park Road. So we just pulled over to uh, the side of the road here. It says Shoquamigan National Forest Pinocchi Scenic Overlook and Trailhead. And it's a little park on Highway GG and I happen to be going east on it right now from Clam Lake over to Mellon. And uh, we hadn't been here before. We stopped here one time but didn't take the trailhead to see where it went. Uh, I'm going to recommend that people stop and check it out more often because right over there is the Pinocchi Gap and the Pinocchi Gap is where the Bad River and the railroad line and tracks come through the Bad River uh, flowing north on its way through Copper Falls, actually through Mellon then Copper Falls and into Lake Superior after going through the Bad River Ojibwe Reservation. So we saw this little thing that said Scenic Overlook and uh, so we're going to see it, so um, maybe I'll just take a walk up there, you can follow with me, we'll see how long this goes, bear with a little bit of the shakiness, because uh, I 
that's what happens when you're carrying a camera in front of you. So this is a really nice little walk. I actually did it last night. I pulled in here on the way back from the Lacoudere Harvest Camp up in the Pinocchi Mountains Heritage Park. And GTAC is gonna mine up there, or there, there, no, let's say, let's not say it that way. They have a proposal to mine up there. Managed to get their own little personal bill passed to allow them to go in. And they're up there drilling right now for core samples. And those core samples might benefit everybody by say, showing what's in the overburden and everything else. Okay, it says, Whispering Springs. Beneath this board walk runs a spring. The bedrock is close to the surface and the soil layer is less than 20 inches thick. The water runs along the surface and disappears on in rock fractures and soil pockets only appear again downstream. Water runs year-round from springs deep within the rock formation. And uh, that is the general rule throughout the Pinocchi Range. Uh, back by the Elcio Harvest Camp, when you go up Moore Park Road and up to one of the old mine sites that had the rail line in it, uh, you go up there and you'll see that they built even an extension to uh, uh, what would have been an old creek bed and put a railroad track around the end of it. So anyway, you look at the bottom of that down there and there's all kinds of like artesian well percolation is I guess what I would call it. So you find it up on top of the crest and summit and somewhere downstream it percolates right back out because it's been in some kind of a crack or fissure during that period getting down the hill oh that's uh, let's see 123 anyone counting out there as I'm going up here okay we're to the top of this little trail and I did not do this last night honestly but there is nothing on there but this little message it's got a nice little place here where if you want to come up here and sit, chat, have a smoke of any kind. They've got seats here. Beautiful, beautiful place. Let's slow down a little bit. I know we might be going too fast for people on camera or being on camera, but that's a nice little whirlwind turnaround. And then you come down here and you go, OMG, with big caps, because here's what I can see from right here before we even get any closer. Uh, right over there, see if we can zoom in on that a little bit, is Mount Whittlesey, and I can see a uh, fire lookout tower on top of that. And that's going to be right in the middle. It's framed between two of the pine tree points there, right in the middle. We're going to look over here to the right a little bit. That's Eagle's Bluff. And I was looking at that last night, and it kind of looked like even a turtle's head with a hump behind it. But then when you go over here, and I might not be able to see it as clearly, there's another hump down there behind that tree that's in about the middle, so down to the lower left a little bit, is the ridge that represents phase one of the proposed GTAC mine, and it actually encompasses the body of the Pinocchi Mountains Heritage Park that the tribes are uh, declaring as a site that uh, can't be drilled because of the history of its mining of 2,000 years ago and beauty and pristineness and it, and it might have actually been uh, a certain amount of uh, awe and sacredness to what we're seeing right now even back then. There's no doubt. There's, this is a fasting place in some places. Uh, these are quiet places. These are ceremonial ground places. And uh, you get up here and walk around and you understand why we could say that. Actually, you cannot see it through the trees here, but it's the Pinocchi Gap over here. No, oh, I'm going to find it. It's right over here. Aha! Uh -huh. 
That's a bluff. Let's see if I can, what I'm going to do here, back up a little bit. That's the bluff right through here, that through the trees. And I'll take a little look at it. Pinocchio Gap is what they call it. What there is is a great big, I suppose I could call it a plug, an iron plug. This is the high edge of an end of a ridge and summit of ore that's sticking right out over there. That if I was a indigenous person, I would want to go over there and find out what's up top of that hill and just sit up there. And so, I get this great urge to go over there and walk over there and go to the top of the summit over there and find out what's going on and maybe sit over there and think. <laughs> I just love to be able to do that. Over here too, this is one of the trips that's going to take place this summer. Over up to Mount Whittlesey and Eagles Bluff on the right side of there that just sheerly cuts off. Highway 13 and 77 come up over there. We just heard a vehicle go down below. That's on GG coming out of Clam Lake going over to Mellon. And on, I'm on my way right down there to Moore Park Road, seven miles southeast of Mellon, Wisconsin on 77, right along the Tyler Forks River on Moore Park Road, either the uh, LCO Harvest Camp, the Moore Park Road parking lot. Uh, there's all kinds of festivities going on over there the last few days. Guitars, hand drums, uh, wild onion picking, uh, Let's see, they're bringing out birch bark baskets, diamond willow, they're carving, they're planting gardens, they're eating, they're doing out in the woods harvest things and touring people up there and creating actually a kind of little subsurface uh, sustainability uh, community. I've had two deers gifted uh, to them, one a road kill and one a first kill from a Bad River youth and uh, See this pristine land out here? All those ridges. Okay, let's look at it there. GTAC phase number one. GTAC phase number two. Right there, Mount Whittlesey. Let's focus in on it if we can a little bit. I don't know. And this would be, I think, the third phase somewhere through here. Pinocchio Gap running back down toward Clam Lake, maybe uh, phase three, four, and five, and into the woods all the way down to the other end there. One of the world's largest potential open pit mines ever created in a pristine environment like this. Wow. Anyway, this is Paul Domain reporting for IndianCountryTV.com from the Pinocchi Mountain Heritage Park Hills and Valleys of uh, near Mellon, Wisconsin. Miigwech, Gigawabamin. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to say miigwech for joining with us and come back again soon.